Senator Golden. Um, and actually, uh, um, that's why we have United We Stand. We need to unite so we can stand together. Um, in our format today, I, will, I shall pose a question and then direct it to the panel member. After the answer is complete, I welcome any panelists to add further on the topic. So we'll start with uh, uh, the executions of the Coptic Christians in Libya brought, to, pr brought the pearl of ISIS to Egypt doorstep. What is the risk for their incursion into Egypt itself? And I would like to start with Dr. London. Well, there is no doubt that the Muslim Brotherhood has spawned a good many terrorist organizations. Not merely the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood established in 1928, but people do not realize that it was the money from the Muslim Brotherhood that established Al-Qaeda in the first place. Uh, Jordanians were largely responsible. Muslim Brotherhood members of, of Jordan were largely responsible for it. Now, what I think is critical is that the 500,000, roughly 500,000 members of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt do represent a threat. There is no question. When we in the United States speak cavalierly of human rights violations in Egypt, we overlook the fact that there are 500,000 potential terrorists in Egypt that want to kill El Sisi and want to destroy the government. Even though that is a relatively tiny portion of the 90 million in the society, it represents a very serious threat. So my feeling is that we are not, we are not seeing an end to this situation. And we will see that there is more violence in Egypt and across the Middle East. It is just the beginning. We are going to engage in a long, long war. And as I indicated before, the war is not merely a military battle. It also, it's also an ideological battle, which is one of the reasons why I was so impressed with the speech that President el-Sisi gave at Al-Azur. That struck me as a very important ideological point, because you have to be able to make the argument that there's something wrong, there's something fundamentally wrong with the arguments that are being made by the Muslim Brotherhood. So we've got to fight on two fronts, one on the battlefield, where it's necessary to defeat the Muslim Brotherhood, but two, defeat them ideologically as well. Uh, Dr. London, do you think the Egyptian government should have taken permission from the White House before the airstrike Libya, in other words? Let me, let me make it perfectly clear. The Egyptian government does not have to rely on the White House to engage in an attack. There was every justification for doing so after the 21 cops were killed. But I think that there's been a terrible mistake that's been made by this White House. And the mistake is not recognizing the fact that when the second revolution in Egypt occurred, we called it, that is, this administration called it, a military coup. When it was called a military coup, there are legislative restrictions against dealing with a nation that's a military coup. This, by no stretch of the imagination, was a military coup. When there were 33 million people on the streets, that's a popular uprising.